and thank you for joining our panel discussion today. I'm so grateful to have Reverend Linda, Linda Baker, and Kathy Richmond. So we have the two Lindas and the Kathy on our panel today, and I have a topic that I want to share, um, but before I do that, I want to open us in prayer. So, so take a deep breath, get your body relaxed and feeling comfortable and into the present moment. If you want to close your eyes, you can do that. Um, and just breathe slowly and comfortably, just feeling your body relaxed. And as we open our hearts and our minds to the words and the wisdoms that's being shared, we want to recognize our beloved panel member, Nancy, who was a part of our group and who has made her transition. And with this, we ask the blessings upon her soul and the peace and comfort to the family and loved ones and that knowing what an inspiration she was to our group, we come today to share some thoughts from her. So with this, we say thank you, God, and we are so grateful for this chance to share this time with you. Amen. So, so today, the uh, I wanna share some articles that Nancy uh, Siglosi had sent to uh, my afternoon tea group. I started this back in COVID time for our ladies to be able to stay connected and support each other. And we were doing it on a weekly basis. And then as the group, um, as things started opening up and people were going about their lives, we went to once a month. And Nancy was a part of this afternoon tea. And she had a author, uh, Cheryl Richardson, that what she shared with us in this group was that she really liked her writings and her birthday gift to herself at the beginning of the year, she subscribed to her weekly emails and her um, notifications and being a part of her program. Well, Nancy was gracious enough to share these emails with our afternoon team. They became our topic of discussions at some of the, of the get togethers when we would do that. Um, and so what I did was there were, um, four of them that she shared with us recently. And the last one I got from her was the one at Mother's Day. And so I've sort of summarized these emails because they come from Cheryl Richardson's book, Self-Care for the Wisdom Years. And as we get older, our, our priorities start to change. So part of what was shared in this, and it's really a summary of these thoughts that came from Cheryl's, um, their excerpts from her book was, um, basically covering some of the different topics. And so well, to open this up, she said, Louise Hayes, which was a great mentor to her and her commitment to the practice of mirror work, saying, I love you. I really, really love you each time you look in the mirror. And this was something that Louise Hayes really inspired people to do. So it's one thing to say, I love you to yourself and another to act like it. There, there is pain of self-neglect. We often do that. We will say these words, but we don't act upon it. We neglect ourselves. We have had years of crazy, working long hours, staying up late when we needed to sleep, keeping commitments to others and breaking them to ourselves and pushing the body to move faster when all it wanted to do was just slow down. And as we enter into our wisdom years, we're getting more and more of those signals. And are we... Are we really loving ourselves as we go into this? The body holds those memories. It's a wise student, so it follows our lead and it does its best to memorize those behaviors. So it, then it starts to act on autopilot. So the reason why old habits are hard to die and you're finding yourself still doing things that you did in the past and you're going, why am I still up and doing this? So. So self-care in the wisdom years at this stage in life have a different kind of sunrise. You know, learning to value the gentleness of waking up with no alarm, the joy of being commitment-free, spontaneous day to, to do what the soul wants to do, putting time between activities to experience and appreciate the value of smooth transition rather than feeling rushed, and to ask for help and then receive it when offered in despite of how strange it feels. These are some of the self-care items in your wisdom years. So in Louise Harris's words, you will 
be with you longer than anyone else on the planet. Why not make it a good relationship? So take care, self-care. As humans, we are fascinating creatures with so much potential and possibility. And too often we build walls of comfort and familiarity around us that keep a vibrant, exciting life at bay. We all have unlived lives, past not yet traveled, that await our arrival. So during the COVID shutdown, it was a time to take a break and things change radically for a lot of people. What direction did the pandemic push you into a new way of being or an adventure? What caught your interest or where did you spend your time? Binge watching became a big thing with a lot of people and they watched cooking channels and took up cooking or they watched travel adventures and dreamed about being in faraway places or they just loved to watch animal videos to feel that warmth and compassion of those animals. So what sparked new interest for you? So in your wisdom years is looking at those things. What did you, when you had this downtime, where did you focus your attention and your time? This was a way for you to break from the mundane, taking chances and letting new paths take center stage. It was a chance to grow and change. It is a joy to also witness nature's allegiance to new life. During the pandemic, the nature started to grow and things started to get better because we didn't have all the cars polluting and things happening out there. So even nature got a reprieve from the shutdown and an opportunity to, did you get the opportunity to get out and enjoy it? Mother nature can become our nurturer, our church, our playground. It's a contemplative period of life that you can find peace and clarity in the outdoors. Hiking in the woods or walking the country roads in our neighborhood taught me to pay attention, to expect magic, and to trust life even when the world feels unsettled and unsafe. So as Cheryl wrote about these things, she said, Mother Nature has a reliable rhythms, instinctual patterns that can be trusted and extraordinary ability to adapt to change. Nature is a university filled with simple wisdom and what it takes to live well. The howling winds that Linda's experiencing is a way to remove dead limbs from the trees. Water waves carve new paths through earth and stone and the tiniest hummingbirds return to feast on their favorite flowers, become fierce and fragile messengers. So clear out the old, says the wind, Stay the course, declares the river, especially when something is hard, but important, and return to what feed, feeds you, says the hummingbirds, and enjoy every drop. So if you have good thoughts, if you and this quote was from Rao Zhao that she shared, if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams, and you will always look lovely. It's a great way to that facial things of good thoughts is that soul radiating out from your face. It's wonderful to be surrounded to, by objects that make us feel close to the people we care about. They're like calling cards that tug at our sleeves, inviting us to stay connected to who and what really matters throughout the course of our daily lives. So a different kind of gift giving is happening these days with fewer things and more experiences. People are enjoying being and doing things rather than giving things. However, objects that inspire us to share the items we hold dear with those we love, especially in our wisdom years, things we no longer need is a time to share. How lovely to pass on souvenirs of life, of love and a life well lived. So Nancy's gift to me was by sharing this author, Cheryl Robertson's thoughts and books. And she shared the book, uh, Waking Up in Winter. She um, And Cheryl Richardson posed this question at the end. She has a series of questions at the end of the book. And the very first question is, if you were to give your life thus far a title, what would it be? So for Nancy's book, I would title it, A Gentle Soul 
filled with affirming life and love. This was Nancy's gift to me. And it, I'm so glad she shared those with us um, right near the end of the, her time. And it was something that I will cherish. And every time I read something from Cheryl Richardson's, I will be remembering Nancy. So I want to open this up to everybody. This was a lot of different thoughts from Cheryl Richardson's uh, writings. And it covered a lot of different things on how we take self-care in our wisdom years and our wonder years. So um, who would like to share their thoughts? Okay, Kathy. Yes, I'm, I've never read anything by Cheryl Richardson, but I wrote the name down and I wrote the name of her book down. So it's, uh, it's something that um, I plan on ordering her book. It sounds like it's filled with um, wisdom and just good spiritual advice. I'm looking back on COVID. When COVID hit, uh, I decided to, because I had extra time to, to pick up embroidering. And I not, hadn't embroidered since I was a child, but I got a, a kit and it had everything, you know, marked on it and had the thread with it. And I, I embroidered something and I really thought, well, this is fun. So I really, I took it to a new level. I was embroidering like every day. Well, I didn't do it during the day. Every night I'd sit there with the needle. And then people would ask me for requests, like, could you embroider my dog? So I've done so many dogs and kitties because um, I found a lady in Indonesia and I would send her a photograph and she would trace it for me. And then I'd trace it onto the fabric. So that was my, um, I was so into that, that it didn't, it, I didn't elaborate on being alone in, in COVID because this was something new that was filling me. Um, I had uh, some of my stuff in a store and sold some of the things in a couple of different stores. And then, after COVID and everything died down and we got back, I lost interest because now life, I could, I could be out and I could be doing more things. But I'm so grateful that I had that during that period. And it just brought me so much joy. And it brought joy to people that when I was able to frame a piece uh, for them. So um, I guess that's what I want to say. I think it was a, it was a way of self-care a way of um, not sitting in front of the TV set and watching mindless things, but knowing each night, oh, I'm gonna do this project and it just gave me purpose. So that's what I like to share. Linda Baker, what's your thoughts? Well, when COVID was going on, I retreated to the backyard and even after COVID cleared up, I still retreat to the backyard. There, there to me, there's nothing uh, more satisfying than sitting out in the garden. If I can just sit there, uh, but it's like you say, you've, you've got to work on yourself because I can't just sit there and go, oh, I see some weeds I've got to pull up. <laughs> but I do, it, sitting in the garden, <clears throat> recognizing the birds, hearing the sounds, it just awakens all my senses. And I feel so much a part of life when I can do that. So it, it isn't a matter of, of loneliness to me when I can go out in the garden and just experience everything there. And uh, that's my thought. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will definitely share. I, I love this topic, Kathy, and I love this is a wonderful way of remembering Nancy. She sent me so many things. We'd have just a casual conversation. And two days later, she'd send me all this information. And I always felt like she saw me and she remembered and, and would you know, kind of things I may have forgotten about would stay with her and she'd send me articles on that. I also haven't heard of this author. I really loved what she had to say 
And I want to talk a little bit about how self-care has changed for me over the years. You know, when I was young, self-care was all about um, how I look and my makeup and my skin and my body and um, my outfit was it cute. And none of those things really matter to me at all now. Self-care now for me is about prayer and meditation and connection and um, you know, having an opportunity to study and be in the silence. So I, I like the idea of self-care in the wisdom years. It really feels that way to me. As I have aged, I don't get as anxious about things. I don't participate in crazy drama. I, I really, I really like who I am today. And I really don't care what other people think about who I am today. So that's been a really big change in me over time. I used to, you know, want everybody to like me and and think I was all this stuff. And now I just want to like me and I just want to be with God. So I love the topic. Um, of course, I could talk about COVID too, but I really just wanted to focus on um, kind of self-care in the wisdom years for my share. Great topic. Thank you, Kathy. Would anyone else like to say anything before we close our session today? Okay, then I would like to take us out in prayer. I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. And take a breath and turn within. Father, Mother, God, we are so grateful. We are so blessed to watch as time changes us and we change in time. God, it is wonderful to join together in celebration, in memorial, and in realization of all of the ways you nurture us of all of the ways we change and grow. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And of course, we'd like to thank you too, our viewers. Thank you so much for being here with us today. As always, we appreciate it. If you comment, if you like, and if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing so you don't miss a thing. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook. Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.